everyone, this is Fusion Cell, and I'm back with some more Help the Game. This is one of the games that came with the pack. It's called Emily Displaced. So there's 12 casual games. They're small, but they're packed with lots of fun and a bit educational, too. So this one is called Emily Displace, and I think this has to do with what it's like to be a kid that's in the middle of, of a war. So it's a story-based and choice-based. So this one's different than the one that I played before, Verdant Hughes, where I was farming and then sending out the produce to various people in the city that were asking for favors. So this one's more story-based and choice-based. I'm gonna play a little bit. Don't know how much I'll get in, but... So we'll go to chapter one. This is, you are Emily, a 12-year-old girl. You're in a nice park with your parents, Paul and Tara, and the dog, Bruno. It says, Paul, did you bring the frisbee? <laughs> Emily, did you want to play with Bruno? I mean, how can you refuse to play with a dog? Oh. So you throw the frisbee, it spins just above his head as he runs. He jumps at the last second and grabs the disc excitedly. He brings it back to you, wagging its tail. Okay, so you even have to choose what you're gonna eat. Alright, let's say ham. Look over, and a teenager is pushing and jostling the, the three policemen. Some men over, come over, and start shouting at the police. And then pull something from the back of his trousers, but you can't see what it is. Oh, and then also the music changes. So you all hurry up back to the car. I'm back in the back seat with Bruno as your parents load up. There's no heater on. <laughs> so let's be, play Space Soldiers. Okay, let's play the Rebel Alliance, or shall we play something else instead? My auntie says we shouldn't play war games. Huh? Let's see what happens. Let's be the Rebel Alliance. Watch out for the space troopers. Play your game. Crash watches way too much sci-fi, so it's always the same stuff. But he's funny, so you let him get away with it. Bruno gets a little overexcited by Ash you running about the place and barks a few times and you and Ash laugh as you notice some people throwing stuff at police with big shields on the TV. Sitting playing with your toys by yourself when there's a knock at the door. Hmm, so they're not expecting anyone to come visit. It's just Ed from the top floor. Oh, okay, so it's a neighbor. Or do you leave as quickly as you can? So now they have to evacuate. So what does she grab a bag first? So they're all nervous. The elevator is nowhere. Okay, so he's gonna go off to the... Uh, let's 
have her be brave and go with him. <laughs> so you're waiting for a long time when he comes back. He looks pale. Your mother isn't with him, but Bruno is. <laughs> You fall asleep, huddled together under the counter. But the mom. <laughs> you wake up, there's still sounds of bar off gunfire and shouting. You spot a few people cautiously moving down the street. You spot head in the group. Spots you, he whispers something in your dad's ear. And your dad looks horrified. So they have to go with him. They want to be safe now. Looks up. Okay, so now chapter two. <laughs> okay, so we're going to the countryside. Some something that I decided made us go to the countryside. So you're on your way out of the city. The streets are too full of debris to drive. You've been walking for a while now, and the buildings are getting less dense. You must be nearing the outskirts. You see a makeshift barrier made of jeeps up ahead. There are a few men in balaclavas brandishing guns, standing guard. Your dad pulls you to one side. He seems hesitant to approach. The woman approaches, but is stopped by one of the men. She begins to talk to them. So she says she needs to get through. Rebel says, no, can't do, I'm afraid. No one gets in or out. Go back to your home. Okay. That's a problem for me. My home is on the other side of this barrier. Get out of my way. The woman pushes one of the men. He stumbles backwards. The other man raises a gun to her. What do you think you're doing? Don't point that gun at me, I just want to go home. She grabs a hold of the gun and tries to pry it out of the man's hand. I don't think that worked out for her. Your father covers your eyes so you don't see what happened, but he pulls you away. We need to find another way out of the city. I think I know a route that would be blocked. That wouldn't be blocked, blah. Walk through some back streets over a fence down a steep ditch and through a thicket. Soon you're clear of the city and you haven't seen another soul in the process. I'm walking alongside the road for about three hours now and you're really tired and so is Bruno. Start calling her pedal. That's new. Why don't you sit down by the tree over there? Fix the mat. Make sure you're on the right track. 20% battery. Okay, they won't get lost. <laughs> How long do you think it will take us? Couple days. So now they're getting hungry. The roots around his pockets. He finds a fruit bar that has been there. Wow, you hate fruit bars. <laughs> well, if you're hungry... We keep our energy up. So you eat half the fruit bar. It still tastes horrible, but it makes you feel a bit better. Your dad appears to be savoring it and takes ages to eat it. There's more people coming up now. Walk another couple of hours until you get to the rest stop. There are quite a few jeeps up ahead. These ones painted in camouflage. Looks like a bunch of soldiers set up for some reason. So you 
your group approaches the encampment, but the soldiers see you and won't let you come any closer. probably sneak past them to an open crate of what looks like energy bars around the back of the jeeps without anyone noticing. Okay, so what happens if you steal the... Yay! Suddenly the music is very happy. <laughs> I'm still trying to get to his sister's house. Supplies first, I think. There's empty. Um, there's some that are stocked. Dad tries to ho tries the hob. Gas is on. Looks like we can have a hot dinner tonight for the first time in ages. I thought they were only gone for a couple days. That's a bad idea, escaping to the camp up north. Okay, so now we're on chapter three. <laughs> All right, so we're at the camps. So a lot of people are there, a lot of chaos, but eventually you and your dad are assigned to a tent. It rains a lot and the tent leaks. You have no heating or electricity. So she, she's still worried about her mom. Still living in the camp after two years, there are endless rows of tents, and thousands of people there. Your dad now runs a small cafe, and your mother still hasn't turned up. So there's a school set up at the camp to walk to school past the endless rows of tents. There are tens of thousands of people living in the place, with tents providing people with shops, cafes, bakeries, and art gallery. Conditions are tough. Most people don't have any money, but at least you're relatively safe. We've heard horror stories, but generally things are okay here. There are a lot of people who work together to make sure that there are opportunities for life to go on, and most people hope that they can return home. The schools were set up by a charity last year. It's going to be learning again. Oh, it's great to be learning as well. He preferred school back in on Kia, but when you're learning, you feel like you have a future, so you 
arrive at school and you take your seat next to your school friend, Max. So this kid's got a job. Selling drugs in the camp. So it's hard to concentrate as the camp is always very loud and some of the kids can't help but yell and act out. A lot of kids can't get access to education and the class is quite overcrowded. Head home, place a, a single bag of coffee on the way. And when you get home, your dad has a big smile on his face. So he's able to buy food that day. Things are tough, but at least you have some hope. So they're going to stay at the camp for a while until things get better. So it's not bad. I think it, it is kind of hard to um, put yourself in that situation when you're a kid going through this kind of thing, being in the middle of a war. I kind of feel sorry for Emily, but she doesn't have... She doesn't have her home, she doesn't have her mom. She's just kind of having to wait there until things change. So, this isn't, this isn't a bad game at all. It's pretty cool, it's short. Yeah, check it out. It's from the Help, or was it Help the Game? That a collection of games that published by various developers this last week. Profits go towards a charity called War Child, and they help kids that are stuck in, in these wars. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon. Bye!